guys 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 we have to talk about britney spears okay because it's it's starting to really annoy me these people who are talking about the fact that or not the fact that what they think is fact that britney and justin timberlake died in some crash back in 2001 and that the britney spears that you see on instagram is a clone and she's not really alive and and they just bring this clone out I'm really, really, really starting to get tired of it. Why do we live in this world of such bizarre media that we think that this is okay? Guys, this is, this is not okay. This is so weird, guys. Britney Spears is not dead, okay? You see her clearly right there. This Keith Kramer who's talking about all of this stuff, he put out some, some images and it shows Britney Spears' face, you know, like split in half, you know, like photoshopped one picture of her face from like 99 1999 or something and one picture of her face from like now or more present and They're trying to argue like you can tell that she's not the same person because of this and guys the differences on here are so subtle her lips are probably a little bit thicker which we know that many women not just women in Hollywood women many women period um, will do fillers in their lips her nose is ever so slightly longer in the, in, the, in, the, in the newer picture that shows her. Guys, she could have had a nose job or the picture could just not be aligned. Um, other than that, it's like, guys, come on. Are you serious? There's all of these ideas swirling around that Sam is her watcher and, you know, whatever, whatever. I want to talk about in this video that the only crimes that Britney Spears has ever made is being Britney Spears. Now let me talk about this for a second. Britney Spears, who was all of America and the world's innocent sweetheart for a while, she went through a transformation. She went through a metamorphosis and nobody blames her because her parents were clearly they had different agendas, you know, it wasn't that they saw that their daughter was so talented and it was only that they saw that she was so talented and they wanted the world to see that. This was about money. Okay, Jamie Spears has proven that this was about money. And so they were using this poor girl. And the minute she started to break out of that good girl, you know that, you remember that song, I'm not a girl. I'm getting back to my chorus days. Not yet a woman. <laughs> You guys remember those days? Okay. The minute she started to break out of that, you know, oops, I did it again, which arguably oops, I did it again. That, that was almost like a transitional phase. You know, you can almost see her moving into the more sultry, you know, sexy Britney Spears that we see today. But people go and look at the skip, skip ahead 20 years. People look at her on Instagram. She's twirling around. She's spinning. They think she's crazy. They're putting in the comments all of this hate, just like Harry and Meghan, just like people go and talk about Harry and Meghan, putting all this hate into their comments. With Britney Spears, it's no different. Trolls. They are the most unhappy, evil people in the world. And if they see you being happy for one second, they have to tear you down. Leave Britney alone. It's like Chris Crocker said, please leave Britney alone, okay? She's not a clone. She just wants peace. Leave her alone. Now, I would like to argue that the only fault that Britney ever made, well, three faults. I'm going to say three faults. The first one was breaking out of that good girl image. The second one is she is, she represents something new and progressive. I mean, she's a gay icon. Um, she is not afraid to strip them clothes down. And I, t part of that is empowerment. Now, I'm not just going to be stripping my clothes down in the middle of the street or anything, but I do like the fact that we live in a world today where a woman can show her ankles and not be deemed, you know, a to she can't, she won't be totally shamed. Might, maybe she, she might be. But that third thing would be she married a foreigner. Now, I know at face value, those things might not seem really connected and it might seem like it's a little bit bizarre, but think about, remember that, that video where, uh, not video, but that picture where Britney is about, like taking that bat, I don't know if it was a bat or a stick, but to the car when her head was shaved, she looked all crazy. Um, 
Imagine if your parents were your managers putting you around on a gerbil wheel <laughs> since she was like, I, I feel like since she was like six. I feel like since she was a, a, a little child on that gerbil wheel singing and dancing. <laughs> Singing and dancing, trying to get that money. Think about that. Think about what that does to the mind. The fact that you can't even have your childhood. And, you know, we've talked on this channel about, you know, unconscious bias and stuff like that. And education. And, and the advantages that having an education can have. I don't think, now, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that Britney Spears was ever able to go and get a formal education. I don't think she was ever able to go to university um, because she had this huge responsibility to win and succeed in this career of being a pop star, an international pop star at all costs. And her parents were the ones, the puppet masters, who had to ensure its success because that that they, their their dinner plate you know rest on that fact yeah and so i i feel like she she is she's totally warranted to be a little a little cracked you know and to see where she is right now i look at britney as a survivor i am not looking at her twirling negatively honey that is her twirl of 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 success that is her twirl of oh i have made it that is her twirl of like um this is a survivor that's a survivor twirl and we should be respecting her twirls because guys if anybody deserve it it's britney now we know that britney comes from a southern background yes yes so she she was born in mississippi and she grew up in louisiana so she is a Southern girl at heart. And, um, you know, Southern, as I told you guys, I'm Southern as well. And you might not hear from the accent because of my education, but I, I pride myself on being Southern. There are a lot of old traditional values, especially fa family values that are ingrained within Southern society, especially this idea of a chaste woman, a good girl, you know, who listens to her daddy. She doesn't veer outside of what her parents, you know, deem as appropriate. And the fact that Britney played along with that good Southern girl thing for at least, I would say at least the first 18 years of her life. She really played along with that. And I would say from 18, between 18 and 21, I feel like she started to see, you know what? I am paying everybody's meal ticket and it is a thankless job. I think she saw that they almost care more about the Britney that's here on the TV screen, the, the poster, this, this Britney poster, this facade that I present to the world than who I really am. And I think that is when she started to break out of that good girl image. And we saw her mental health start to suffer then. And I think that her parents and the world have resented her in a way since then, which I find absolutely atrocious. You know, this is part of why I really consider myself as someone who advocates for young people. And it's something that I'm going to do throughout my whole life. Because if you just look at child stars and, and how they feel like they don't have a childhood, they feel like they lost something very vital and important to them. Like, you understand why Britney is the way she is. And the moment she started to rage against that machine, people vilified her. So I feel like one of the only reasons that Britney Spears is vilified is because she did not, she chose to not fit into this frame that you wanted to put her in. Moving on to the next. The next one. Britney Spears, at some point, along with sh shedding her good girl image, she became a gay icon, okay? Now, again, I am all for LGBTQ rights. And you know what? Britney Spears, she represented something that at the time, like we like to think of gay rights, human rights and stuff, which I am in the belief of you should be able to love whoever you want to love, honey. It does not matter. Like it's none of our business what people do in their bedrooms. But if you think back to like late 90s, 
at least in the South, again, coming back to, you know, the Southern American states, you know, even though she's an international pop star, that is where she was born. And up North, you know, I feel like gay people were much more robust. They were out and proud and loud. But I feel like that conservative Southern past was still ingrained. And we know that Jamie Spears and her mom, they're both kind of conservative seeming people. And so I think the fact that she became this pop diva, you know, she became this person, not only who had her own mind for herself, but she was clearly advocating for the underdogs. She was advocating for these new generations of people who were really proud of all the nuances, all the creativity, all the special things that made them them, including being a, a kind of a, a symbol within the gay community. And so I think that in a way, I think that in a way her family really didn't like that. You know, even just looking at the framing Britney Spears, um, uh, I always forget the, forget the second documentary name because they're both like framing Britney Spears and something something Britney Spears. But the two documentaries that were on Prime, the way that they separated her, her childhood uh, assistant, because I don't know if you guys remember, she had an assistant, I can't remember her name, that her mom had arranged for her to be there, you know, throughout her younger years as sort of a stage assistant, but also a mentor, a maternal-like figure. And Britney Spears was extremely co close to her. I won't get into the stuff where, like, they were monitoring, monitoring her iPhone. They only let her use her phone for certain periods of the day. But we know that Britney Spears was basically, like, she was imprisoned. I mean, she was imprisoned in her own pop career. It is insane. But to look at that, you know, to look at the fact that she went from this little controllable girl and then she's showing that she's there for gay rights. She's showing that she's there for mental health awareness. She's showing that she's not afraid to show her skin. Um, she's showing that she's a woman with a, a, her, a mind of her own. So she's got sort of almost the women power, women empowerment thing going on. I feel like that, that, that monster, that is conformity. It really didn't like that. The Southern sort of idea of that chaste woman, it did not like that. Her parents, I don't think they liked that. The last thing, um, which in order to sort of segue into the last point of her marrying a foreigner, I kind of need to talk about her time with Kevin Federline. Now, I feel like Britney's kids, I, I feel like they have just been spoon-fed all of this nasty stuff about their mom. And I think K-Fed should be doggone ashamed of himself. You know, to spread all that lie and hate towards th the mother of your children. Boy, you got to be a hateful person to do that. You got to be a hateful person to drive some kids against their mother when you know everything that she has dealt with. You know. It. come on man unless this person was in in with all of this from the very beginning now the people who want to claim that this isn't the real Britney Spears and she's a clone and all this stuff you really think a clone would be this serious about the love she has for her two teenage sons you really think a clone would give a damn at all no because this is not a clone this is real life you know, t t take your head out of the clouds, guys. These, this is people's lives. But K-Fed, you know, I feel like that was really just a phase in Britney's life. It was a phase she had to go through to really find herself and discover what it was in herself that she needed to love in order to bring the right type of love into her life. Now, I've made another video about Sam Asghari. I really think that Sam Asghari is the right person for Britney. I see him as someone who is a strong, sturdy influence. He wants to do everything that he can to protect his wife. And I just think that Americans, we've gotten so far into gender equality, gender, you know, like destroying some of these gender norms, um, an interracial, biracial, multicultural world. We've opened up all of these open-minded conversations so much, which is amazing. 
But at the same time, I think in binary, binary gender norm relationships, meaning between a woman and a man, I think America has sort of forgotten what a good man looks like. And so you have this foreign man, this Iranian American man. And you know, he even said in an interview when, when K-Fed did that disgusting interview with 60 Minutes Australia, you know, he kind of tried to come after Sam. He, he kind of tried to come after Sam, and he came after Brittany directly, you know, saying that she was toxic, she wasn't doing what she needed to do in order to have a positive influence in her kid's life. Well, why? Because she wants to live her life independently? Because she has a husband that is not you, who actually supports her? Because she, she, she can go out and party and drink, or um, because she posts a naked picture on Instagram? Dude, it's her boobies, she can do what she likes. Does that make her a bad mother? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe it's not what I would do. But I don't think that makes her a bad mother when you consider who this is. The iconic legend who this is. But then again, I don't know. I sympathize. It can be easy to be the child kind of growing up under this, this supernova that is um, a pop diva star. Okay, I get it. But... Um, K Fed, you didn't have to come after Britney like that. You didn't have to try and alienate your kids from her like that. And you didn't have to come after Sam like that. And you know what Sam said? I really loved his response because there was a lot of speculation that K Fed did that interview to really just get back at, at Britney. To really get back at Britney and to make a little bit of money while he was doing it. Because you know it's all about that coin. And I haven't seen K-Fed drop any music for a very long time. And I haven't seen him on any reality shows for a very long time. So I got to be sure that he got paid a little bit of money from that interview. Hmm. I want to thunk it. <laughs> so Sam basically says, don't come after my wife. And you know what's different between me and you? I got a job. <laughs> I was like, Sam, mic drop, bro. I wish I had a mic right here so I could just drop it. Like, mic drop. Sam's got a job, okay? He's modeling, he's acting. And, guys, if Sam Asgari was using Britney Spears for her clout, for money or whatever, we really, really would know that. We would know it. He would be alone without her taking expensive trips. He would be, you know, spending all of her money. But no, he is working for himself. And at the same time, being there for his wife, protecting his wife. So, guys, I, what do you think about this stuff like that, that assuming Britney Spears is not the real Britney Spears, she's been replaced with a, cl a clone? What do you think about the fact of, um, you know, that she has sort of come into her own respect and people don't like her for it. What do you think about my my hypotheses on this? You know, this this fact that she broke out of her good girl image, that she married a foreigner, and that she's a gay icon. Do you think that those things have something to do with the way that she's been vilified? And um, yeah, what do you guys think about the situation in general? I really want to know because I'm over here questioning, like, am I losing my mind? Why, why are people saying Britney Spears is dead? Why are they saying she's a clone? It's, it's not only absurd, it is disrespectful. Like, you guys are talking about her like she's not here. It's disrespectful. I'm glad she turned her comments off on Instagram. I think since the last video, she's put them back on, but... Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you have not already, like I said, please go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. Uh, click the bell so you know whenever I post video, and I will see you in the next one. Okay.